it's time to start. Uh, we have the uniqueness theorem to conclude the proof. So the theorem was So assume that, uh, so let me rewrite the statement quickly. Assume omega is open, bounded, smooth. And assume that U is a C2 solution. And I can consider and consider. the problem UTT minus C squared Laplace of U equal to zero in zero T times omega. And then we have the initial condition, the boundary condition. So U equal H on, on, um, zero t times the boundary of omega, and then u equal u zero bar, say, in C2, and u t zero u one bar in C2, at t equal zero, with assuming also compatibility condition on H, U0 bar, and U1 bar, plus compatibility conditions, uh, so that uh, you, we, have, uh, we, we, have, we are discussing about C2 classical solutions. So assume and consider that problem, then 1 has at most one solution. So let, let me recall that this is now this is a uniqueness statement. So nothing is, say, is said about existence. It is a uniqueness statement. It does not pretend to construct a solution. Okay. And uh, uh, what we have done up to now was in one dimension. Here we are in n dimensions. Uh, but uh, we studied the problem on an unbounded domain because in one dimension we studied the case omega equal to r and therefore uh, this, this statement does not apply to the one dimensional case. Okay. So the proof w was the following. Uh, we First of all, we remember, we recall the um, Remember that uh, uh, we have the uh, classical integration by parts formula. So uh, if everything is smooth enough, omega is bounded, smooth, and so on, then we know that uh, U um, F divergent, sorry, maybe, maybe you can also consider the non-homogeneous case, OK? say C2 also, but C0 would be enough, but smooth enough. OK, uh, so oh, let me call phi divergence of eta and dx. We know that this is equal to minus grad phi eta dx plus the integral over the boundary of uh, eta dot nu omega phi dh n minus 1. In particular, we know that, therefore, uh, if eta is a vector field which is a gradient, so if eta is the gradient of something, say eta is the gradient of v, say, then uh, this formula becomes phi Laplace of V dx equal minus integral over omega scalar product between grad phi grad V dx plus 
simplify the uh, directional derivative of v in the direction of the exterior unit normal. So we know this, okay? This is preliminary, so le let me keep just this form of the integration by parts formula. And uh, so le let now u1, u2 be two classical solution solutions to problem one and define W as yesterday the difference. Okay? This is a definition. So W satisfies by difference this is a linear problem so WTT minus c squared w of v equal to zero and v equal to zero v equal to zero u zero equal to zero on the lateral boundary say here uh, at time maybe Uh, w0 at t equal to 0 and wt0 equal to 0 so it satisfies the homogeneous problem so everything is 0 initially initial position, initial velocity and also the condition on the lateral boundary of uh, of the cylinder. So, so let us introduce for any T zero capital T, capital T is given also positive, uh, let us introduce this quantity. Maybe we can put enough. So we have WT square plus the gradient of v dx squared dx. Therefore, we are looking essentially at uh, the energy at time slice. So this is omega. And then we have uh, capital T. And so at some time, we are integrating on this slice these quantities. So we are integrating at this level. Okay. So uh, we can compute uh, for any t we can compute a derivative of this quantity with the aim of proving that this is zero. So uh, we can differentiate um, under the integral sign so that we find wt, wtt plus scalar product between the gradient of v and the gradient of vt. Uh, where of so wt all objects here are evaluated at tx and uh, uh, I have already used the, the fact that the derivative with respect to time of the derivative with respect to x commutes so I have already uh, made this 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 uh, passage uh, so that this is the gradient of Vt. In this form we can apply, so notice that this is, uh, this is uh, just an integral in space, so that we can apply this theorem where now T is considered as fixed. Hmm? So in this, in this form there is no time, okay? But this now can be considered as an object like this, 
provided that P is fixed, just a fixed parameter. Okay? Hmm? And therefore, I can apply this with the following choices. So this remains the same. And then, WTT. And then I apply this with the following choices. Um, phi equal to W at the time T. So phi, phi, phi of X is W at time T fixed X. And V is now WT at fixed time t, considered as a function of x. And therefore, this quantity is exactly the first addendum up to the sign on the right-hand side. So this is equal to minus this plus this. Huh? So let, let me put the sign. So let me, le, OK. So uh, therefore, we have that this is equal to uh, let me write it here specifically so grad v grad vt is equal to minus uh, v t laplace of v plus the integral uh, of Vt dv and dv. Hmm? dv d mu. So let me check that uh, this is correct. Maybe dvt. Maybe it's this. So let me check once more. The, the, the. So v is, uh, is the plus of v. Rad v. Dvt. Rad mu. OK. This is OK. Is it, is it OK? Hmm? OK, so now by replacing this, dx plus the integral over the boundary of omega, wt, scalar product between grad v and normal. OK. Fine. Now, uh, c square. c square. Now, uh, this is equal to 0 inside. Therefore, for any t, this is equal to 0. Huh? Professor, we this is Ah, we can take c equal to 1 if you want. Doesn't matter. Ah, because, yes, because uh, I have to put this square here. Yes, 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 thank you. Uh, yesterday, uh, because yesterday we decided to take c, square, c equal to 1. OK, thank you. So let me put c square here just to. Hmm? OK, so c square, c square, c square, c square, c square. OK. And maybe there is, uh, there is a C square. Uh, where is it? 
Ah, I see square everywhere here. Okay. Okay. Fine. So this is equal to zero. Hmm? Not only this, but also <coughs> we know that W is equal to zero here on the lateral boundary. Hmm? The lateral boundary is equal to zero, and therefore WT is also equal to zero. Hmm? W is equal to zero on the lateral boundary, and therefore WT is equal to zero. Therefore, this is also equal to zero on the lateral boundary here, on the, on the um, how can I say, on the boundary of the portion of the cylinder. Hence, hence, for any t zero capital T, we have that e dot t is equal to zero. Okay. This implies that e t. By the way, e t. Uh, this, this just for simplicity, we have made this computation in the open interval just to avoid the right and left derivatives. But this implies that ET is equal to E0 for any T. Huh? Now E0, now E0, um, okay, so we have this. This is constant. We have this. Huh? Now, E0, what happens to E0? Everything is smooth enough, so what happens to E0? Let me simply observe that E0 is one half WT0 square plus E0 square. Hmm? But again, W is 0 on the bottom, and WT is also 0 on the bottom, and grad V is 0 on the bottom. Huh? And therefore, we obtain that for any T, 0 capital T, ET is equal to zero, which says, therefore, that uh, WT is equal to zero in uh, in the in the interior of the of the portion of the cylinder, and the gradient of V is also zero in the interior, huh? because this is. I mean, if this is zero, necessarily this is zero everywhere and everywhere on the slice, on the time slice. But this is true for any time slice. I mean, we have shown that here WT and grad V are zero, just on this time slice. But then this is true for any time slice. Hmm? And therefore, it is true inside, everywhere in the open set, time space. Hmm? 
Hence, V is constant. Hence, V is constant, but V is zero on the boundary, and so therefore, necessarily, V must be zero. This concludes the proof, because if Z, V is zero, this implies it's equivalent to say that u1 is equal to u2. OK? So we have the proof of the uniqueness theorem. So you see, this, for the moment, what we have done in this course is the following. We have uh, um, considered the class of PDs, maybe first order. Now it is second order. Huh? We have uh, found some explicit, more or less explicit expression of, the, of solutions under assumptions on the domain, on the initial conditions, on the non-homogeneity, and so on. And then we have only considered smooth classical solutions. And then we have made some theorem on uniqueness but nothing on, exi on existence for general domains. Okay? This is, for the moment, the spirit of the course. So what we have done is we have a PD. Maybe we have studied first order. Um, quasi-linear, and we have studied second order but of the wave type, linear, wave equation, linear. Then we have found explicit, explicit as at most as as most as possible solutions so that we can we can deduce qualitative properties qualitative properties under however under explicit uh, classical solutions Classical meaning C1 in first order and C2 in the second order case. Classical solution, we have studied qualitative properties and under, of course, assumptions on F, which is the right hand side, initial conditions, initial conditions, and importantly also on omega. Hmm? maybe in the whole line, for instance. And then we have said something general, however, now more general uniqueness result. Uniqueness result. So it is clear that in this picture there are several things missing. missing. In particular, what is missing is construct existence of solutions in some class for bounded domains, for instance. This is, it is immediately clear that is, we have never touched this problem. So th this has been our, our approach, because the field is very huge, and so one has to choose exactly uh, some, some topics. Okay. Now, uh, uh, yes, yesterday maybe I leave you an exercise. Exercise, homework. Uh, which was, uh, assume that you have to consider in one space dimension, in the half line, you have UTT minus C squared UXX equal to zero. 
in the first quadrant. Then you have uh, you um, the, your initial conditions, say u zero equal u uh, zero bar uh, smooth enough c two u t of zero equal u one bar c two c one maybe it's enough. And uh, um, now we have we have a boundary. So this is x. So we are working in this first quadrant, and we take uh, for simplicity uh, u equal to zero here. plus compatibility conditions. Assume also, assume compatibility conditions on u0 bar, u1 bar, so that uh, the, the, what we are looking for will be C2 up to the boundary of the quadrant. Huh? Okay, this, this, and then we want to find a solution to this. The solution, actually. So one way can be the following. So extend u0 bar as follows on R. Because you, see, you, see, you know, this is C0 just on the half line. And this is C2, sorry. And this is C1 just on the half line. Huh? Now we can extend U0 bar, call this U X, U0 bar X. Define it as follows. So u0 bar x if x is bigger or equal than 0. Uh, <coughs> One compatibility condition on u0 bar says that u0 bar 0 is equal to u0 bar 0 is equal to by assumption. I mean u0 bar is defined here. It, it is continuous up to the boundary, and its value at zero must coincide with our condition that we assign coming from this direction. And coming from this direction, we are assuming zero. So one compatibility condition, compatibility condition, one of the three compatibility conditions is this. Okay. minus u0 bar of minus x if x is negative. Then there is also the other compatibility condition on the derivative, which is 0 and 0, and then also the second derivative. Anyway, we have written this compatibility yesterday. Um, so this is a, this is a, an even extension, and sorry, an odd extension. Odd extension on the wall of R. Okay. We also extend U bar one as the same. So U bar. 1 x x is u bar 1 x if x is bigger or equal than 0, and minus u bar 1 minus x if x is less than 0. 
also this is an odd extension so that now we can consider the problem so let me denote it maybe by u tilde uh, we can now consider the problem on the wall line hmm? by compatibility everything is smooth enough so we can consider now a new problem u tilde tt minus c square u tilde xx equal to zero in t but now we have this and then uh, u tilde zero equal uh, u zero bar x and u tilde t of zero equal u bar one x okay because now our initial, initial data are given on the wall line therefore we know and they are smooth enough by compatibility C2 and C1 and therefore we, um, we, we can write down you, who is U tilde TT so u tilde tt of tx is equal to one half then we have u bar zero x of x plus ct plus u zero bar x x minus ct mm? plus 1 over 2c integral u bar 1 x s ds so this is uh, sorry u tilde tx okay so this is the expression of our solution so this is uh, old-fashioned problem it is the problem that we have studied on the wall line uh, two lectures ago lectures ago okay we are allowed to do this because we know that the initial conditions are defined and smooth enough in the wall line and so we know that the solution the solution of problem so this is problem say two and this is problem say two extended so the solution, the solution to two extended to two x is, is this by the previous lectures. Okay, now we have just to, to, see, to see how this solution looks like on the first quadrant. Huh? Because this, on the first quadrant, will solve this problem. So what do we, have, do we have to do? Is to restrict this just only on the first quadrant. And we will have the solution. OK? Oh, by the way, notice also that uh, u tilde of tx is also minus u of t minus x. Huh? u tilde tilde tt minus so u tilde, til, u tilde tt at tx will be minus u tt 
at t minus x and u tilde xx at tx will be uh, minus u xx at t minus x. Hmm? Huh? Huh? I mean, um, if I define u tilde as this, if I define this, then I have that u tilde tt minus c square u tilde xx is equal to zero on the whole, on the whole half, uh, half, half, space, half plane, half plane. Because here you see the minus remains and also here the minus remains. And therefore, when I add these two with the proper sign, the same, uh, the same is true. Hmm? OK. So uh, we have to restrict uh, um, our u tilde just to, so, and maybe this is, could be home. Oh, let me see if it is so difficult now. Homework. So, for instance, when x minus ct, so x bigger than 0, t bigger than 0, and also this, then we have that u of tx under these uh, assumptions is just one half, then, okay, this is positive. So the extension coincides with, I can remove the x here. This is positive, and therefore I can remove the x. And this is, these are both positive, and therefore I can remove the x. So at least we have shown that, uh, that if if x is positive, t is positive, and also x minus ct is positive, then our solution uh, is uh, um, our solution is u zero bar of x plus ct plus u zero bar of x minus ct plus 1 over 2c integral x minus ct x plus ct u1 bar sds. OK? Now what happens in the remaining case if x is positive, t is positive, but we are in this region. Okay. Now, we have this solution. This is true huh? for any without restrictions. So now, x is positive and t is positive. So surely this is positive, and so here I can remove the x. However, now this is negative. Hmm? So this is, sorry? So this is negative. And therefore, u0 bar x is minus this with the, with the sign, opposite sign. Minus u0 bar of ct minus x. OK, now, now maybe I can leave you this uh, home. It's not difficult, I think. <coughs> U1 bar of S dS. It's not difficult because you can write this. I show you the hint. So let us consider, maybe, maybe let us consider just this part, okay? Just the integral part, just this. 
So let me rewrite it as the integral x minus ct 0 u1 bar x s ds plus integral from 0 to x plus ct the u1 bar x s ds. This is just this, this uh, integral part. Okay? Now, we know that x plus ct is positive. Hence, we can remove this. Now, what is this? So this, is, uh, this remains the same. Now, let, now, what is this? By definition, is 0 minus, I, now I recall the definition. The definition is this is negative. This is 0. So I'm integrating in negative region. And so I have to change, I, I have to use the definition of this. So minus u1 bar minus s ds. Okay. Okay, now I make a change of variable. I call sigma equal minus s. And therefore, I, I get the integral from ct minus x and 0, u1 bar sigma s. Let me call now uh, sigma. Let me recall it s, s ds. And so you see now, when, when uh, you sum this with this, you end up exactly with this. OK? By the way, so the exercise is complete. Is it okay? Well, a remark is that uh, this exercise is uh, more realistic than, uh, so the situation of a half line is maybe slightly more realistic than the wall line. But uh, what it is interesting about this is that this is, uh, this result, this expression allows to find useful, let me just remark this. I don't want to enter the details because uh, the course is very huge and we don't have time to do too many things about just one equation. We have to say several things about various different equations. So, but the remark is that, that uh, this, this, is, this formula, say formula star, say, star is useful for finding explicit solution, the explicit solution of UTT minus C squared Laplace of U equal to zero with boundary, con with initial conditions in, uh, say, 0 plus infinity times R3 plus initial conditions. What I'm saying is that this formula, if you are interested in, you can look in the book of Evans. If you want to find the solution now of the, of the free problem, the whole space, in three space dimensions, three space dimensions, then uh, you can uh, you can you can use you can use passing to a trick on polar coordinates uh, and so on. Passing to polar coordinates, uh, you can uh, uh, use this this result to, to to attack the problem of finding an explicit D'Alembert type 
sort of D'Alembert type expression, but more, much more complicated in this more physical situation. Three space dimensions. Okay. So finally, uh, Finally, we can, we can um, study the problem. So maybe homework also. Uh, let me see. Uh, homework, maybe. So let L be positive number. And let us consider the problem of, uh, so this is the, the last, the last uh, exercise on the wave equations, just the last one. So UTT minus C squared UXX equal to zero, um, T say bigger than zero and X in between zero and L. And then, uh, so we have really a, a string now, this is realistic. We have a string of finite length. And I want to see the propagation of waves inside this string. But the problem is, of course, the string is finite. So when a wave goes, for instance, in this direction, then there will be a boundary. It bounces back and, and goes in this direction. So there is this, uh, this phenomenon, very interesting physical phenomenon. So. <clears throat> So it is, this is the wave equation. And then I have the, the initial condition, as usual, u0 bar with the smoothness uh, smooth enough, ut0, u1 bar. And then <clears throat> we keep the string fixed at the two, at the two extrema. So the, 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 the string is a zero Dirichlet boundary conditions. So uh, for any time at zero, we have zero. And for any time at L, we have zero. Huh? So these are zero Dirichlet, so-called Dirichlet boundary conditions. So we have a sort of function like this, say, hmm? 0 and L. And now the idea is to extend it uh, as follows, for instance. Hmm? To L in an even way. Hmm? And then periodically, continue periodically. So this is just and so on. OK, so we start in an interval 0L. We know that u is 0 here and here and here. So we can continue in an even way. In, an odd way, in an odd way, sorry, in an odd way here and here. So we find now a 2L periodic, periodic. So this we can do for U0 bar and U1 bar. Hmm? So <clears throat> U0 bar, U0 bar of X minus U0 bar minus X for any, and then u0 bar x minus u0 bar 12 minus x. <coughs> oh, 
Ecco, ok, there are the compatibility conditions, as usual. Uh, so we extend u0 bar in this way, and also the same for u1 bar. The same for u1 bar. OK. So now the idea is to look for a solution to this problem. Now you see we have periodic functions. Uh, u0 and u1 smooth enough. So that smooth enough, so that what I will say will converge. Uh, in particular, do, do, is there something that comes in mind when you have this si such of periodic uh, situation? Huh? Is there something? Or? Can you? Repeat the question. So now you have a, a 2L periodic function, u0 bar and u1 bar. The same for u1 bar. So what it is natural to do when you have a linear equation and periodic conditions? Is periodic then they have to go to real Yes, yes. One possibility is to write u0 bar and u1 bar in Fourier series. OK? So u0 bar of x. Now, this is uh, odd. And so let me denote it by a n sine of n pi x over l for any x to 0 l, for instance. And the same with u1 bar. And let me use the notation bn. bn sine of n pi over lx. OK. u1 bar and u0 bar, OK. Where I n over two, one over two L uh, minus zero and two L of U zero bar S a sinus when OK. And the same for Bn. The same for Bn with u1 bar here. Now, what says the exercise? OK. We know that this, this uh, operator splits into the composition of two operators. So we know that we have the formula, the usual stuff. So u of tx is equal to uh, 1 half u0 bar x plus ct plus u0 bar x minus ct plus 1 half 1 half x minus ct x plus ct u1 bar sds. Because we have extended everywhere the, our functions, so so we have uh, uh, we know that now on the whole line we have such a kind of solution. And then the point of the exercise is to rewrite this expression of the solution in terms of the coefficients a n and b n. Okay. And so the exercise says prove the following. 
So prove the prove that. So the, so the expression of the solution u. Uh, so prove that uh, prove that uh, u of tx is the following superposition is the sum an cosine pi n c t over l plus b n sine of pi n c t over pi n c t over l okay sine Okay, where a n is equal to two over l integral s sinus pi n s over l ds and b n equal to two pi n c I hope that the numbers are correct. Sinus pi n s over l s. Okay, prove that u of t x has the following expression. What you have to do is, so u zero bar has this expression. However, here you have x plus c t and x minus c t. So you have to use the formula sinus of alpha plus beta equals sinus alpha cos beta and so on. Uh, here also you have u1 bar, which has this expression, and you can, you can integrate the series term by term. So you can integrate, so you can, here you have a series, but the series goes outside the integral because we have uh, smooth enough assumptions on u1 bar so that the series is sufficiently strongly co uniformly converging so that you can interchange the series and the integral. The smoothness assumption is useful also for this. And so you can put the series outside the integral so you in can integrate term by term. And the integration is easy because it's very easy to find a primitive of this. Once you have done this, then I think that uh, it is just a matter of uh, coupling together the, the terms, and then you, have, you should have this expression. That's it. So the, the exercise is just maybe not so easy, but just a computation using the, the fact that you can interchange the, the integral with the series. Okay. Fine. So this is, I think that we have concluded now the The, uh, the wave equation, and now we will change type of equation. So this concludes uh, this part. Now we want to uh, go through the study of another equation, so the, the so-called heat equation. So let me let me now make some uh, some some quick introduction. So the the heat equation is now 
completely different pro from the previous one, even if apparently it is very similar. So k here is a constant. k is a constant. k is a constant, and for us, it is very important that k will be always positive. Hmm? So uh, keep in mind, in particular, k equal 1 will be the, the usual case. So k equal 1. If k is equal to minus 1, this is another style. This is, uh, uh, um, if k is equal to minus 1, so avoid to consider the case k equal to minus 1. So remember that the, the coefficient in front of the, dif of the diffusion of the Laplacian here is positive. So it is very important not to change sign in this coefficient. Okay? Now, apparently this is a very similar, if you put here c squared in place of k, you could think that this is similar to the previous one. Actually, it's a completely different equation. Because here, the difference is that you have just one derivative in time instead of two derivatives in time. So this is a very big difference. See? So completely, we will see that qualitatively, qualitatively, very different from UTT minus C squared Laplace of UT. So this is so this this was this is called so the way equation is called the hyperbolic equation. While this is called a parabolic equation. Hmm? It's called the parabolic equation. Now Remark, maybe first remark. Remark one is that if u is independent of time and solves your PD, so if you find for some reason a solution of this which actually does not depend on T, then by solution, it all, I always uh, mean uh, classical solution, minus Laplace of u is equal to 0. Hmm? And this is another, again, very different, different, say, different PD, which is called elliptic equation. So, Stationary solutions, where stationary mean, meaning that it is independent of time, stationary solution of the heat equation solves uh, an elliptic equation like this. Okay, and this is just a remark. What we will do in the course, we will study a little bit solutions to this, and then a little bit solutions to this. This is the program of the next, say, four or five lectures. Okay. So there is a uh, so there is a relation, an immediate relation between this and this, at least. Stationary solutions to this solve an elliptic problem. Okay. Notice that uh, once once more that this is not taking c equal one. This is not Laplacian, minus Laplacian of u in one higher space, one space, one higher dimensional space. Huh? This is not an elliptic equation. Huh? E 
If I want this to be an elliptic equation, this should be minus utt minus c squared Laplace of u equal to zero. This would be sort of Laplacian in a higher space dimension. But this is not. Here there is a plus and here there is a minus. So this is definitely not an elliptic equation in a higher space dimension because you have a plus and a minus. This is elliptic. And this is parabolic. Hmm? But also, what if uh, u is independent of time? So OK. If u is independent of time, in this case, that's true that it satisfies this. However, it, this is very rare. I mean. So stationary solutions are, are usually considered for the, the parabolic case. Uh, yes, where stationary means uh, independent of time. It is true, however, that if you are lucky enough and u is independent on time, then still you have this. But in general, you don't have stationary solutions. And so this is a, a PD, which is completely different from uh, this uh, and this. Uh, it's just a remark. OK. Then. Uh, definition. Ah, remark. Remark two. What about the initial conditions? How to assign to assign initial conditions? So what our experience, what is our experience up to now? For first order, we have assigned, for first order, PDs, even quasi-linear, we have assigned an initial function, U bar, right? For the wave equation, we have assigned uh, uh, um, initial position and initial velocity. Like in physics, when you have an ODE of second order. Hmm? Acceleration equals something, you assign position, initial position, and initial velocity. And also, uh, it was important here that on our hypersurface sigma, we had some sort of transversality condition between the, uh, the, um, the PD, the operator, and the sigma itself to be, say, non-characteristic. Here and also here, we, we, have, we have seen that uh, uh, the time t equal to zero is non-characteristic for the wave equation. And this was at least related to the cauchy kovaleski theorem. Now, what about the initial conditions in this different, uh, in this different uh, PD? What do you think? Can we assign, can we assign uh, u0 bar as before and u1 bar as before? No, this cannot be done. And there is a clear reason for this. Why? Why I cannot say, why in general I cannot study this problem, say ut minus Laplace of u equal to zero, say, and then at time zero, I cannot, in general, study this. Hmm? Because if I give this, huh, then I am, I'm, but the equation now, if, if the solution is C2 up to the boundary, then I have a relation between u1 bar and the Laplacian of u1 bar, which is not reasonable. Because u1 bar is. So this says that we cannot study this. Okay? And indeed, this is usually a way that we can put. Uh, the, uh, the initial condition. So there is an initial condition just only on the position. And you cannot assign the initial velocity. 
this is in st strike contrast with the, with the problem of the wave equation. It is clear, OK? Now, next is the following, is that uh, xi in R I n minus 0 is, uh, uh, is uh, characteristic for, for the PDE, for the heat equation. This is for, for, for L. If uh, you, when you have a second order PDE, you have to look at the principal part of the operator. And the, it turns out that, uh, ah, yes, K. Thank you, thank you, sorry, thank you. K, the diffusion coefficients, so uh, K. If, by definition, now I'm considering just only this part of the operator, and the definition is that, um, Uh, so it is uh, C1, C, uh, C uh, plus 1 plus n, 1 plus n. C1 square plus plus Cn square is equal to 0. So you have n plus 1 components. The first x is C0, and then this must be equal to 0. And the point x on sigma is non-characteristic for, for the operator L if nu sigma x is non-characteristic. So this is the usual definition. I, I am going quickly here because the definition are exactly the same as in the wave equation, just only the, the um, in the wave equation, remember, this was psi square take c equal 1, psi 0 square minus uh, psi 1 square plus, plus psi. This was the wave equation. No, c1. Here you say? No, 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 there is no C0 here because uh, when you look at the, uh, at, the PD, uh, the operator, you just look at the principal part, namely in the part of the linear operator where the higher derivatives are. If you look at the higher derivatives, so you have here two derivatives. So you define the, um, the characteristic taking into account only this part of the operator. No, uh, now you see, now I show you. So, so, first, so first of all, um, <clears throat> just only the principal part of the operator, here you have two derivatives and two derivatives, so C0 and C1, Cn. Now here you have no C0 because uh, you have, so just only C1, Cn squared. So there is no C0 in the, in the case, so you don't have this, and so you have minus this equal to zero, which is, this is the definition. Now, let's see how they look like. For instance, take a plane t equal constant. Take a plane and hyperplane t equal constant. t is c0. It corresponds to c0. T. So t equal constants, for instance, t equal to 0. For instance, t equal to 0. Now, one of the two unit normals to this sig so this is sigma. Hmm? This is one of the two unit normals, this or the opposite. Huh? And you see that this is, which, which are the coordinates in this case, nu sigma at x is clearly equal to 1, 0, 0, 0. And these are n components. And so what we see, 
we see is, is, is that unfortunately, actually, this, this uh, is characteristic. Is characteristic. This is another difference with respect to the previous case. We will usually study our PD on a characteristic surface now. Because we will assign our initial condition on at time zero. So all, all these planes, t equal constant, are characteristic. Nevertheless, we will study this problem on t equal zero. Parenthesis characteristic. This does not exclude that we can study our problem. We can study it, but what we cannot invoke is a Cauchy Kovaleski type theorem. This we cannot invoke. Huh? We cannot invoke to have a local solution a Cauchy Kovalensky result. Hmm? So, all this discussion, already from this very initial starting discussion, you can already realize how different is this PD from the previous PDs that we have, that we have studied. So, okay. Okay, so uh, so let, let me come back to our new new uh, PD. So uh, let me try to observe something about the scaling properties scaling properties of the PD. Of course, one one remark is the following: if you change t into minus t. Uh, then your PD changes radically because you, you have a change of sign here, but nothing happens here. So it is something completely different, as I said. It's, it, is like, it is like to change k, k positive into k negative here. So you, you cannot think about this PD as modeling something which, which is reversible in time in some sense. Indeed, this is called the heat equation because it is a model for, for um, expressing the propagation of heat in a medium, which propagates as time goes on only. Huh? On the other hand, when you had UTT here, if you differentiate twice, you change T into minus T, then you, you, you don't have any difference. Okay? So, uh, so now here there is a direction of time which is well, uh, so time is going on, is going in this case. Next remark is that there is an invariance here, scale invariance. Namely, if you have a solution, you of t and x solution, then you can ask what about you, you can multiply it by some constant, uh, let me call it a of a, 
bt ax uh, is, is still a solution for some b and a constant. Well, there is an important scaling here down uh, underlying this PD. And so the, you see that uh, um, B must be equal. So you see B must be equal to A squared, essentially. Huh? OK. This suggests that it is interesting to look at, uh, at the following quotient, because you see, uh, it is like you, you take a half derivative. So this equation has uh, the following property. Two derivatives here, but one derivative here. Mm -hmm. And so this is the reason for this two here and this one here. And so. This is the so-called the so parabolic scaling. And indeed, uh, one can look for special solutions depending on this variable. So this is a, maybe, maybe this suggests that maybe a function v of this, uh, we could look for a solution special. Maybe we don't know who, what to do because this is a new equation. Maybe we can look for a solution not depending on t and x, but maybe depending on x squared over t. So maybe v of xi, xi equal x squared over t. This could be a, an attempt just looking at the scaling and symmetry properties of the operator. Actually, it is more convenient. So let, let us, let us uh, it is more convenient to, uh, to look for a solution where there is another t in front here. Um, let me call this, this, uh, this constant uh, t to the alpha, maybe. OK, so t to, it, t to the alpha v of xi. OK, it is more convenient to do this. And uh, uh, so let us start. So. Let us start to look to look for special solutions solutions to UTT, no UT minus K UXX in one space dimension, for instance, for simplicity, of the form for special solution of the form. One of the square root of t, t is positive, remember, v of psi. T is positive, eh? OK. So maybe this could be really a very good exercise, homework, that we will do tomorrow, of course. But I believe it's, it's, it's instructive. So home. Look. <laughs> or an even v. Hmm? So that um, v prime of 0 will be equal to 0. Hmm? Even function, v prime equal to 0, and show that Oh, let maybe my a is slightly changed the notation. I would to be more consistent with the usual notation. Maybe more more usual. Instead of calling this v, let me call it capital U. Sorry. 
a small change of notation. So, uh, so, uh, so look for an even uh, real function u, which is even uh, u prime of zero in zero. Show that. Uh, Show that necessarily u prime plus one over two k psi u is equal to zero, and hence u of psi is some constant. Let me call c. We cannot use c because c was used. So let me call some constant b. B e to the minus c square over 4k. Hence, uh, u of tx is some constant uh, e to the minus x square over 4kt. So there is a sort of miracle. There is an explicit solution in the wall space, in the wall half space, half, uh, half um, time space. B is a constant. So and then try to. Uh, so this is home, and again in home. Uh, at which points points of say zero plus infinity times r is u singular one two is u in L1 log of well um, we will if you are not able to do don't worry because we will do this tomorrow at the beginning of the lecture uh, this is this is a very very important uh, function which is an explicit solution out of the origin say, of uh, your PD and, is, and has a name, is called the fundamental solution of the heat equation. Fundamental solution of the heat equation. equation and this is very useful for constructing other solutions and also to understand uh, the qualitative properties in general so again you see uh, we will prove tomorrow that we are able to find some explicit solution in some domain of course there will be some singularity here there is some denominators or something but uh, Anyway, try to, to see if you are able to do something about, try also to understand the shape of this function. Maybe try to depict a graph in time space when you are in one space dimension. Try to depict a graph of this. So one space dimension, one is time, one is space, so you have a graph in R3. Maybe it's not impossible just to understand what is the shape of this. This is a Gaussian, of course. Okay.